Football show, North Jersey Sports.com's original multimedia series talking all things football across North Jersey. This is season six, episode eight, down to the nitty gritty here. I am Corey Dobiak, being joined by my illustrious panel of North Jersey football insiders, starting with the venerable one, Jimmy Avatable. What's going on, Jimmy? What's up? My, my favorite time of the year, the NJIC playoffs. So, uh, very excited about this week. Yeah, we, that's going to be topic number one. But before we get to it, let's introduce our other North Jersey football insider, the tweeter extraordinaire, the head husky, the one and only Brian Carr. What's going on, Brian? Hey, it's great to be here talking football. Like Jimmy said, playoff time. Got some nice NJIC playoffs. It gives us an earlier start on the late playoffs in the state championship. So it's good times. We'll be down in heights this week. Bri, I heard a terrible rumor that you actually had to work a real job on Saturday and only got one game in this weekend. Is that true? Right. Yeah, that was yeah, that was really a low point on the season, except when I was in Italy. <laughs> right. Um, you know, but, uh, yeah, sometimes there wasn't much on Saturday. I would have gone to Randolph maybe and saw Randolph Sparta with Pat, but, um, you know, it's a little far away. But well, anyway, I do a little work, and you got to make a few dollars here and there. Um, but keep track of the Twitter, the Twitter stuff, and watch the scores. Yeah. Watch little uh, highlights on uh, huddle. Watch a little huddle action. You catch up. You know. You're all over the yeah. place. But it was a good game. We had a decent game to sell. We'll talk about that later. Randall. Yeah. Yes, That's you guys. Game. That that was the you know standout game of the week for sure, and we will talk about it. But before we do that, it's all about the NJIC. The playoff brackets have been updated. We got four teams vying for the championship with Park Ridge at Hasbrook Heights in one side, and on the other side we got New Milford at Rutherford. And we are going to talk to Park Ridge head coach Tommy Curry. He will be the guest on this episode of the football show. So, Jimmy, like you said, uh, favorite time of the year, and the NJIC playoffs really spice it up a little bit. Hey, it's like we've talked about it numerous times. It's a great idea, and we've got two great games coming up this weekend. Uh, unfortunately, you can't be at both places. That's, an, that's another story for another time. But Park Ridge at Hasbro Kites and then uh, New Milford at Rutherford. Uh, Rutherford obviously being the defending champ, and Hasbro Kites won it the first year. So uh, four very, very good teams, evenly matched, and uh, it's going to be a hell of a, a two weeks. All right, gentlemen, it is time to bring on our esteemed guest this evening on this edition of the football show, a young man who makes me feel very old the first time I met our guest this evening. He was running around as the point guard on the Dwight Englewood basketball team that made the Bergen County Jamboree Final Four. Now, all of these years later... I'm a lot grayer. He is joining us courtesy of our sponsor, Felician University. He is Tom Curry, Jr. Tommy, great to have you here on the football show. Uh, It's great to be here. This is this is a great little uh, little thing you guys do, and uh, I know a lot of people look forward to listening to it. But um, you know, it's you're right. It's it's years in the making getting to here. I remember (laughs) uh, I remember those days back at Dwight, but thankfully now I'm at Park Ridge, and we're having a great year so far. Yeah, you really are. Let's start this thing off. The C, uh, you know, the, the announcement of what comes next in the NJIC was made. And as I'm reading here in the NJIC playoff semifinals, Park Ridge at Hasbrook Heights, 7 p.m., Route 17, Friday Night Lights. You got to be excited. Uh, we're, we're ecstatic. You know what? To, uh, to win our division and uh, to represent our. Our little, our little division is going to be amazing. Um, we're up to, we're up for a, a, a tough task. Hasbro Kites is tough. They're, uh, you know, they're physical. They're, they're strong. They, uh, they do a lot of things, both offensively and defensively. But you know what? To be in this position this late in the year is, uh, is great for not only the, the town, the community, but our team. You know, they've been working real hard. So it's great to see. Yep, and Jimmy, go ahead. You you saw them against Emerson, which was the deciding game to uh, get Park Ridge over the top and into the playoffs. 
Yeah, Coach, first of all, congratulations on making, you know, the semifinals. That's great for Park Ridge. Uh, when I saw, first thing that, that jumped out on me in that Emerson game was obviously Vinny Pinto, your quarterback, middle linebacker, uh, you know, outstanding runner, is running for over 900 yards and, and 13 touchdowns. But he also can keep that defense honest. He's thrown for nine touchdowns. Talk a little bit about Vinny Pinto and what he brings to your offense. You know, he, he, he's, it's funny because last year when we converted him into a quarterback, we penciled him in as one of the better running backs in the league just by the stuff he does with his legs. And unfortunately, our quarterback at the time had gotten hurt, and he was our backup, and he really just took off from there. And, you know, they say, you know, the quarterback and, and point guard in basketball and all that stuff, they're an extension of the, co- of the coach, and he really is. He, he thinks the game. He understands the game. I don't consider him a quarterback. I consider him a football player because, you know, playing – playing how we do with the spread you're right he ran for over 900 yards already he's our middle linebacker he's second on the team in tackles he he's he's a true leader but he also he has a little something about him that's that's kind of special and and if you were at that emerson game you saw some of those jump cuts he does he's a special player but he's he really is he's an extension of the coach and he's bought into how we want to play and it's, it's amazing to see Tommy, did you have football at Dwight Angle? Was the program still alive when you were there? Of course. Well, yeah. I was the quarterback. I was running around back there behind um, behind a mammoth offensive line, you know, getting my uh, getting my bell rung every weekend. But um, no, we did. You know, we we our best year we finished was four and five. You know, we would we would compete with the teams we could compete against and. With the teams who were bigger, you know, we we got our bell rung. But uh, it's a shame because I always say I wish I had played in the offense that I'm playing in now because it's a spread offense. And back when I was playing there, we were playing in the wing tee, and, you know, it was (laughs) guard trap and power and and cross block and waggle. And I'm like, oh, man, I could – I wish I could sling it around a little bit right now, but yeah, no, we did. We could, we competed as well as we could for for a team. We stayed afloat. You know, we stayed competitive for the most part. Between the hedges, there running the wing T behind an offensive line that averaged 148 pounds. I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly right. We were in. Um, all, all those guys went on to be uh, great doctors and lawyers. They did not go on to um, to the seats of college football. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, go ahead, Bry. Hey, but looking back at uh, in Pat Rice's uh, Berg and Safe dot com, his football uh, website, Tom Curry's listed on there. On uh, two thousand, he was the first team All League quarterback, and also in two thousand one, also he was also first uh, second team uh, All League quarterback uh, for Dwight um, Anglewood. So the football program was there. They weren't the greatest, but still competitive. Um, Coach, let's talk and move forward to today. Um, looking back, I looked at some stats. You guys, the last four years, including this year, last three plus this year, you're currently 25 and nine. What do you think you took since you took over the program? What have you guys done to continue the success of the Park Ridge Owls uh, since you've been there? You know, in, in all honesty, it, it, it starts with the community on up. Um, our lower levels have been great trying to get uh, trying to get kids to us. And in real reality, you know, everybody loses people to parochials, and I feel like. You know, we're in kind of a tough area because we have St. Joe's right in our back door. We have, we have all three of them basically with it. Right. You know, you could be at any of them in within 10, 15 minutes. You know, Bosco, Joe's, and Bergen. But, you know, to their credit, they've done a great job down to lower levels. But I've also, you know, I, I kids are different now these days. You know, you can't be a, a, a you know, a person who's just going to be harping on them at all times. We try to keep it light and loose, but, you know, we focus on the core things. You know, family first, then religion, then school, then football. And, you know, it kind of works out in a nice way. But, you know, the, the kids have bought in. The coaches have been amazing. I have a great coaching staff. You know, our, our offensive coordinator, Steve Harvey, is a student of the game. He's young, but he, he's passionate. Our defensive coordinator, Angelo DeSavo, has been a – been yeah. a head coach at New Milford and Pascac Valley. I mean, uh, Passaic Valley, and 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 you know, been at a lot of different places that 
you know, he he understands the game immensely, and, and it's been great. Our, our our staff is amazing, but the community in general just loves football, and it's great to see. Yeah, it, it is. It's a, a tradition honed by Gary Mioli, and you know, it, with his tragic passing. I mean, to to keep the you know, and there, I, I you could correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think there was some type of movement to try to you know, Emerson and Park Ridge combine in wrestling, and they're talked about it somewhere in football. But you've kept your independence, and you know, how important is this team to this town? I guess is my question. Uh, it, it's huge. It really is. You know, it, uh, every year I hear, uh, you know, oh, coach, I can't wait for the, you know, I go into the, the corner of deli down the, down the street right by the high school, and it's like, oh, coach, can't wait for the new year coming up. And, and, and I think this is all over, you know, the country. Um, the numbers don't show it, but it's all right. over the country. People gravitate to football. You know, they really do. People love the Friday night lights. You know, they love going out on a Saturday afternoon game. But, you know, in general, they just, they love their football. And, yeah, there's been mumblings and, and grumblings about, you know, us mer- merging with Emerson. But, you know, right now we're happy in the place we are. And I think, um, you know, that that's, that's years down the road if it ever does happen. But the community in general just loves football. And, and what's not to love about it? It's been one of the best sports we have. Go ahead, Jimmy. That was a good answer, by the way. Yeah, you know, coach, we 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 let off the conversation talking about Vinny Pinto on the and the offense and for good cause. But you know, the one thing that pops out about you guys this year is the defense you're playing. You know, six games you've given up 33 points and three shutouts. And you know, it seems to me watching the game, a very aggressive defense, like the blitz a lot. Uh, talk a little bit about your defense, your suffocating defense. No, it, it's true. Um. Uh, Angela DeSalvo came back on this year um, as our DC. He formerly was the ROC, and then he helped out a little bit as a volunteer um, in, in a couple years after he was the OC. But, you know, he, he kind of brought on a pressure defense, and it, it's great to see. I mean, the kids have bought in. It's not it's not easy changing defenses, but, you know, they bought in. We're, we're, we, I, th- I feel we use our, our abilities to the best we can. You know, we have guys moving, we have guys blitzing, we, we, our schemes are, are always sound, and, and it's true, we've gotten great play out of our, out of our front three, our, uh, our D tackles and our nose, our linebackers, even though, you know, right now I got my quarterback as my middle linebacker, and my other middle linebacker is probably about maybe 145 pounds soaking <laughs> wet, and he's, and he's playing, he's playing great, but, you know, it's a whole overall effort. They really bought in. You know, getting eleven to the ball, and it's great to see. How great is this NJIC here <clears throat> with what they're doing? I mean, we keep saying it. We harp on it all the time. It's the model going forward. I mean, it, it's it it like everybody else is moving away from these local rivalries, from the traditional rivalries. The NJIC is all in on keeping this together. Uh, small schools versus small schools, rivalries, divisions, uh, you know, conference championship, all that stuff. How, how about the NJIC? No, it, it, it's great. And it, it's funny because I actually teach in T Caucus um, as well. I'm the head basketball coach at T Caucus. And Charlie Voorhees has been instrumental, the head football coach over at T Caucus and the AD over there. He's been instrumental in this whole thing. Just, you know, really harping on that we need to keep football alive rather than you know trying to force 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 and the way it's set up is 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 great you know it really gives teams the opportunity to not only for us you know we have a great opportunity playing Hasbro Heights and then you know who knows winner or loser of of New Milford and Rutherford but also the other teams in the other division in, in the other sides you know they they get a chance to cross over with teams who they're comparable with. And and for a team who is great, that's awesome. Then they're going to play great competition and they can get power points. But for a team who's struggling, it also keeps them alive as well, where they're not going to play, you know, a, a team that might beat them up and hurt their program physically. And it, it's just great. It, it's a great system they put in. I hope it kind of, you know, I hope other people kind of pick up on it because it, it, it really is. It, it's, it's saving... In more or less, you know, Group One football, you know, because Group Two and Three, 
yes, they'll they'll be okay. They'll have numbers, but Group One, especially, you know, everybody fluctuates. You might have a good class, you might have a bad class, but in general, it, it's been it's been amazing. Yeah, no, and a lot of people have taken notice. And before I let Brian ask the next question, I just want to tell you before I forget to put it in Charlie's ear that we'd love to have him on the show one of these times too, because as you said, he is maybe the architect of this whole thing, and and we love it. Go ahead, Brian. No, I will. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make two points, uh, and then I will get to my question. One was a good year so far. Uh, first time you're six and zero since like two thousand and one. If I'm not mistaken, it goes back quite a ways. The other thing I'll mention, you talked about before about your guys, the size. A good friend of mine, his son was Ryan Fallon. Uh, he was on the team 2010, 11, 12. And he played linebacker D-back, and he wasn't really big, but he was really tough and probably was a leading tackler for uh, one of those seasons on the team. Uh, but my question, we had mentioned this earlier, um, I just want to ask you, I thought it was really good of what you did back in 2016 with one of your kids, uh, you had a special kid on the team at uh, the Down Syndrome, Maddie Gray, and you had a special play for him that really let him score a touchdown in the game. Can you talk about him for us? Yeah, you know what? Um, I can't take all the credit for that because I reached out to the Woodridge coach um, and, and we both came up with something that we could, you know, hopefully put together for him. He's been a part of the – he has been a part of the uh, Park Ridge football – family I would say since uh, the lower levels elementary school um, one of our parents BJ Lewis who uh, Zach Lewis is the son who plays for right now for us but also his his other son Josh Lewis played for us and he, you know he kind of took him under his wing and you know every single year that he would come and come and come and just be a part of the program and it, it, when I had talked to Gary before he passed away, one of the things he really wanted to do was kind of maybe get him in a game in some capacity, whether it be a JV game or, or, or something to get this kid just, just feeling great. And, you know, we had talked to Woodridge, and they decided to, you know, really help us out. And to his credit and, and their credit and everyone's credit, it was unbelievable. It was just an unbelievable night. But the greatest thing about it is he's still around. He's basically part of the coaching staff now. The kids who, who who were there, who saw it happen, you know, they're kind of getting older now. But even the younger guys, the freshmen, the sophomore, who, who you know weren't on the team then, they gravitate towards him. And he's just he's just a he's a polarizing figure, and it's amazing because it kind of keeps us, you know, grounded. Be like, hey guys, you know, things could be going a lot worse than they are now, and he comes every single day and and, and helps us out, and it's great to see. And it's funny you say that about Ryan Fallon. I coached him in baseball, too. Yeah, yeah he's a good baseball player. Really good baseball yes, player. Yes, he was. He was a very good baseball went, player, yes. He went on and played in college for a little bit. I think he was up at Ramon. Very good baseball, baseball player. player. Yep. <laughs> Tommy, where'd you get all this coaching in your blood from? I have no idea. I don't know either. I, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, what, about I, uh, your dad? I had, what about your dad? I, what about your dad? Listen, yeah. listen he, he's... He, he's obviously not only been an instrumental figure in my life but i think a lot of people's lives um i think you know now it, 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 he's obviously you know towards the end of his career um it, it, it was a str- it's a struggle what happened with him um you know after he had the two strokes and now he you know he can't see anything um but i'll tell you what he rubbed off on me a lot um and uh, he he looked I thought he loved me a lot, you know, playing for him and, and, and going to Dwight and doing all that. But you should see him around his grandson. Holy mackerel. He, <laughs> he loses it. He thinks he's, he thinks he's the funniest thing in the world, and he just has a great time with him. But, you know, I, I, it, it rubbed off a lot, you know, so, and, and I try to, try to hopefully make him proud. Well, I, I know for a fact that you have because I've spoken to him about it. A former co-host on the ball game on NorthJerseySports.com, Tom Curry. What That's a- true. That was that was the first one we did, I think, back when I was with uh, Indian Hills Basketball. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I can't keep track yeah. of your career, man. You're driving the turnpike up and down. You're in the middle of the county, the bo- top of the county, the bottom of the county. Jimmy, all right, let's get him back to reality here. Ask him about Hasbro Kites, what he's got to do. <laughs> yeah, you know, Coach, obviously going up to Hasbro Kites uh, this Friday night, and most people know the name Josiah Purdy. He's their main man, like Vinny Pinto is yours. But when when you look at Heights, they also have some 
some other weapons that can hurt you. The running back Mike Robertson, the quarterback Spencer Lee. Talk about going into a game where you know they have a great player, but they also have other kids there that you have to defend. Without a doubt. Um, you know, Purdy is one of the best players in the county, and he would be playing at Heights or Bergen or anywhere. It doesn't matter. He's one of the best players in the county. Um, but the, the the tough thing about them is they do have a very dynamic attack. You know, it's not just him. It is the running back. It is the quarterback. And, and the heart of their whole system is really how tough they are up front. You know, that they just, they have guys who are lunch pail guys. You know, they're ready to put the work in and they don't care. They're, they're, they're just gonna, they're gonna come and smack you in the mouth every single play, every single minute of every single game. And that, that's the tough part playing them because, you know, you try to take Purdy away and somebody else beats you. Try to take, you know, maybe it's sack the box and say, all right, go throw the ball, and then, you know, they're successful doing that. So it's an uphill battle, but I think um, I think the schemes we have put in, and I think there are, uh, our, our game preparement is going to be fine. I, I, you know, at the end of the day, it's, we're going to have to line up and play them, and it could be them, it could be someone else, but it'll be a good test for us, but there, it, it's, they, they come to hit you, they come to play, you know, it, it's going to be a good one. Do you have a shed, Tom, in your backyard? Oh, right. Because Do I have a shed? Yes. I have a I have a garage that actually has a uh, has a nice little man cave area because I did see that you guys went to the Calzos. You know? Yes. So I, I don't I don't know, I don't know I don't you know I, I'm I'm in Rutherford I'm right down the block you guys could have came right here. <laughs> well, l- listen, if you win this week, Del Calzos out and we're in the garage next week, fellas. <laughs> Brian, you got anything else? No, I really don't have anything else, Coach. Um, I think Jimmy and I are going to be there Friday night to catch the action. We expect a great game. Uh, as you know, that's a great program down here at Heights, and I'm excited to see Park Ridge come down and uh, put on a good show down there. Um, any last thoughts on the game for us? What do you think, Coach? No, I listen, I, I agree. I, you know, they've been the staple, I think, of um, them and New Milford probably have been the staple of Group 1 football for a while now, you know, along with Park Ridge sprinkled in here. I mean, with um, Pompton Lake sprinkled in here or there. So hopefully, um, you know, we show up to play and, and we're ready to uh, we're ready to hit some people. But I think it's, uh, hopefully it's a good game and hopefully, you know, we, we, come out, uh, we come out happy and healthy. How about you, Jimmy? Last thought? No? No, Coach, you know, obviously good luck, and uh, we'll be there Friday. Thank you. Tom Curry, head coach of the Park Ridge Fight Owls, kind enough to join us here on this edition of the football show. And the NorthJerseySports.com crew, the football show crew, will be out in force on Friday night. So good luck. Great talking to you, as always. And uh, I'm good. we'll take you up on the offer if you ever do invite us to the garage. <laughs> Thanks, All right, great stuff there with Tommy Curry as he gets ready to lead his Park Ridge Owls into Hasbro Heights on Friday night. But now let's turn our attention to the rest of the goings on around North Jersey. And Bry, you guys on Friday night stationed yourselves up at Wayne Hills. Uh, it was the marquee matchup, the old NBIL rivalry, border towns, border high schools, Ramapo and Wayne Hills going at it. Uh, and listen, Ramapo has now really separated itself from the rest of the pack. A 38-22 victory against Wayne Hills on the road. 7-0 and now, Ramapo. Awfully impressive. Hey, I have to agree. Uh, Ramapo really um, looks solid. Um, at first, the beginning of the game was kind of a little slug set. They were trying to figure it out, what we had going on. And uh, Wayne Hills got an opportunity to go up 14 or 14-7. And that was the last of their lead. They got up 14-7, and Ramapo just rolled from there. Um, they scored three TDs in the second quarter, um, and then they were up 20. They were basically 28 to uh, 14 at half, um, and rolled. Um, you know, AJ Winfield had three touchdowns in the first half. Uh, I was tweeting it was going to be a shootout. It looked like it was. It was, but it became one-sided. But Ramapo really looked well put together. They were throwing well. AJ was throwing three TDs. 
second half, they pounded it. They brought out a Luke Gragone. He was running. I said running wild, man. The kid was all over. He had like 150 yards running. Uh, he was running hard, and they couldn't tackle him. Um, they really looked good. Um, their defense was solid. They had a bunch of key plays, threes and outs, uh, that really turned the tide. They just kept keeping them off the field, getting it to their offense, and they were scoring. Uh, so, Ronald Pope really looked solid. We thought it was going to be a test. Um, it didn't seem like it came down to a test. Uh, one thing I have to say, Wayne Hill, um, the Juco, their wide receiver, is a star. We thought if they could have, they could have thrown it to him 200 yards. Uh, for some reason, they throw they got about 150. But he's the star. Um, and if they could get him open, but they got too much pressure on the quarterback and kind of held him, you know, from getting that 200 yards. Um, that's what happened again at Japan. He was able to get loose and score a lot of touchdowns. Uh, Ramaphosa was able, able to hold him down. So a pretty good game. Good to uh, Ramaphosa, the top seed in that group three. And, uh, Jimmy, I don't know if you want to add anything to uh, my comments. Yeah, you know, very rarely does a team go into Wayne Hills and out-physical them. I mean, you could probably count that in the last 25, 30 years on your one hand. Uh, and, and obviously Ramapo's passing offense with A.J. Winfield is tremendous. But as Brian mentioned, they took the game away from Wayne Hills in the second half on the ground. And, uh, you know, that's going to bode very, very well for Ramapo uh, in the future. Yeah, I mean, they did, they've passed every test, you know, uh, Riverdale being the, the lone team to really, really hang with them. I mean, that was an overtime game, 42-35 victory for River uh, for Ramapo. And, uh, you know, Group 3, they look no further than a potential rematch there, Bri. Probably, but before you get there, um, Ramapo's got a pretty big game at home against Randolph on the right. 26th. So that's going to be another test for them. Um, get through that. Randolph is a group four team, so they won't see them in the playoffs, but it'll be a very competitive game. Randolph was able to de- handle Sparta. Ramapo in the season against Sparta. It was the first game of the season. Uh, they only won 21-18. We were at that game. So that'll be another test, but eventually likely to see Riverdale down the road in the playoffs in the group three um, level. So uh, it brings it back to Bergen County. But they have to go out to what uh, Horace County out to Randolph, or you were the Randolph Mars County team first. Yep. Jimmy, interesting too. You know, I'm just looking at Rampo's schedule in front of me. They're playing the full nine. Other teams are playing eight, and it doesn't matter from what I understand as far as, you know, seedings and playoff structure and everything else goes. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, how many teams opt for eight games in the future. You know, that's the question you go back and forth. Do you feel like you're cheating the kids an opportunity? If you're only, you know, in high school, you're only allowed to play so many games in your career, and you wonder if those four years, you know, four games during your four-year career, if you're really, you know, cheating the kid an opportunity to play. Yeah, but, you know, play. what do you think, Brian? Um, I really, I don't, you know, I mean, I, I hate it that it doesn't count. You know, that's the only thing, right. you know, when they're playing that game, you hate it because it doesn't count towards the playoff seating. Most kids want to win it, but if you're going to the playoffs and you got guys banged up, and we've seen it even last week or even the week before this, before they, A.J. Winfield sat out the week before to yeah. get ready for this game. So these guys sit out. So it all depends on where you're at. I mean, most teams, they want to win, right? You want to win to keep it going and roll it in. So it all depends where you're physically your conditioning is and if anybody's hurt you rest them there so you know it's hard to say it's hard to say what you do but you know the kids want to play to win most coaches will tell you you want to win every game so yep. it helps momentum into that next game in the playoffs alright the other game that stuck out to me uh, from this past weekend was not so much the game itself Paramus is 52-7 to win over Northern Valley Demers but you know Paramus is now 7-0 and they have obviously separated themselves from, uh, you know, a lot of the teams in Bergen County. They've played a lot of good teams on their schedule. They've beaten everybody. The question for me, Jimmy, is do they take the next step? They play uh, this week at Riverdale. Huge test for them. And it, it, it's gonna we're going to see if they're, you know, just a, a real good team or if they're on that level of a team that can actually make a run and win a state championship. 
Well, I'll tell you what, as the weeks go by, it seems to be that question is being answered. I, I think they're an excellent football team, you know, with their schedule. Uh, you know, they beat a, a Ridgewood team, uh, you know, which when you beat Ridgewood, in, that hasn't happened too often in Paramus, uh, just a couple of times. But, I mean, they are, you know, you mentioned 52 points over Demarest. And they're heading into Riverdale on, on Friday night, you know, on a high. Uh, you know, I think that group three bracket, I think people are very, very quick to throw Ramapo and Riverdale in the final. But I think the key becomes who might have to play Paramus in, in a sem- possible semifinal uh, where the other team might have a, an easier game in, in, in the one four matchup. So, uh, you know, a lot is yet to be determined. Yes, and Brian, I know Paramus is near and dear to your heart. What do you think about the Spartans here? You stayed for that whole game against Ridgewood. I stayed for the whole team. Um, you know, and it's going to be a test for them this week against Riverdale for sure. That's going to be their. You know, they they played. They haven't played that toughest schedule. Ridgewood was a tougher game for them, uh, and they handled that. Went to overtime and squeaked that one. But this will be a real test. We'll see a barometer here where they really are. Uh, and this week, what I noticed, I don't have all the stats here, but I think Kyle Jacob had three touchdowns. Um, typically, um, Trevor Bopp, the quarterback, is the one rushing the most yards. The week against Ridgewood, he ran for like 180, was 179, 180. So, you know, he didn't seem to do too much this week. So they, they can go back and forth. And then the other, they have one other guy, um, uh, Prado, Stephen Prado, who steps up and, you know, he has some, uh, you know, some catching some passes and, so, so there's even a couple other kids in there. There's not just not a one-person team there. So, but this week they'll be tested for sure. A lot of people, a lot of players at Riverdale. You got six quarterbacks, right? I don't know which one you're going to get. So, and DJ has always got something up his sleeve. So we're going to be tested in Riverdale. Yes. So, um, it should be fun. What do they call it? The Midland. Uh, they're playing for Midland Avenue. Is that the Midland <laughs> Avenue competition? Uh, yeah, the Avenue Railroad or something. The Rams yeah, Rams right. Rams that's Rams. right. Yeah, that was the le- season season opener a couple of years ago. All right, Jimmy. Take right. well. Well, what else do we miss on the public school side? And then we'll ask Jimmy to take us around the big boy division. Probably you too. But Jimmy, what what else? Anything stick out to you last week? Uh, you know, again, we mentioned Ridgewood. Uh, you know, had lost to Paramus. Uh, had lost all to Pan. They come out on Friday night and they pretty much blow out Clifton, who was undefeated. So, obviously, that's a great win for Ridgewood. And, you know, Coach Johnson's Maroons are always a factor in uh, their Group 5 uh, championship. And, uh, you know, they that was a, that was an eye-opening performance for me. How about you, Brian? Um, I think Westwood. Westwood Mawa game. Um, uh, did, I thought Mawa was favored. I'm even checking with the announcers of the game. They gave me a score. 27-13 was the prediction of Mawa. Um, so I was surprised myself. I've seen them play. I've, I haven't seen Mawa. I've seen Westwood. But Westwood, they used, they had three guys score TDs. They dominated the game. They held Mawa down. They held a really good quarterback, Kyle Teal down. So Westwood played a good game. So I think in the group, too, you got to watch out for Westwood. They're sneaking up. And as Larry said earlier in the year, watch out. They're going to get better as the season goes along because they're young. So um, I think Westwood, Tyler Giordano, Christian Mays, and then it was Anthony Caruba, all had touchdowns. So watch out for the Cardinals. Now wait, let me get this straight. The announcing team that you asked to pick a score chose right. took Mawa in that game. Is that right? That's correct. That That's would be correct. Jimmy. Hurd, Jimmy. That, he knows that would. I told him. That would be Larry Lafreire and John Francola of that would W. Be Larry. Yep. Uh, all right. Uh, is that the same uh, tandem that was just inducted into the Westwood <laughs> High School Hall of Fame? <laughs> uh, I got. I got to talk to those guys. And that was Hall of Fame night. Too. They were on the field that night too. You can be wrong. Yeah, we can be wrong. Uh, they got a free meal yeah. and they picked against the hometown Cardinals. Unbelievable. All right, Jimmy. Let's go around the big boys. What happened there? Well, obviously, the, the, the best game, the big game, was uh, St. Joe's going up to Don Bosco and, and beating Don Bosco 31-10. to 10. They played very well, complete game, which at times St. Joe's has not done. That's a nice bounce-back win for them after that 
tough loss against Bergen the week before. Uh, a little bit of surprising game. You know, again, we talked about Bergen Catholic sky high off that win against St. Joe's. They take a winless Pope John game on. Uh, not many people were interested in that game. Everybody thought that was going to be a blowout. And that was a 7-6 game in the middle of the third quarter. Uh, Bergen turned the ball over, a couple of interceptions thrown in the end zone, a couple of fumbles, and they really had to work to come out with a 14-6 victory against Pope John. Yeah. Bry, thoughts on the non-publics? You got any? Um, you know, trying to think, you know, DePaul went down and beat Hudson Catholic pretty handily, no problem there. Um, you know, not too much else. It's still, you know, this slug fest. Uh, we've got it. I think next week is the big one. You have DePaul. You got Bergen going up to DePaul, so that should be a competitive game. And then I think we also have um, um, up at Joe's. I think Peters comes up to Joe's. I'm not mistaken. That yes. week too in two weeks. Yes. So we got to, That's going to kind of you know see where everybody shakes out. Who's number one here? Uh, one thing we we'll have to mention: one of the alumni of Bergen. I don't know if everybody caught this. Jared uh, Garantano had a really big game for Tennessee, a quarterback. Tennessee's been, you know, not the, the powerhouse at all, uh, 500 team, but they beat a competitive uh, top-ranked Auburn team, and he had three TDs, or two TDs, and like 300 yards throwing, so I kind of noticed that when I was uh, wandering about on a Saturday afternoon checking out college games. Oh, yeah. another thing I'll mention, too, I forgot in my Westwood report, um, Nolan Borgensen had a punt block and then they recovered it for a touchdown end zone. It gave them a small lead, and then they went on to, they shut them out the rest of the way, and they won like 38-21. But so uh, the local kids um, out at the, the big school standing out. Uh, I did see Michigan, too. Michael Dumfrey, uh, formerly of DePaul, uh, was seen to be back on the field. He had gone out injured last week, and he was out hustling around, and uh, Rashawn Gary was out for Michigan. But he, Michael Dumfrey was in on the line, and I noticed making some havoc uh, in their win. Uh, good win for them uh, over the weekend. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Jimmy, you want to handle the Rutgers report? <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, n- not much. To, not much to report, but I want to mention another game, and I think Brian's a little bit too shy to mention it. Uh, Yukon <laughs> with, with a big thirty-five nothing win over Fort Lee, which you know gives them an opportunity to play for obviously a winning season, which would be a step uh, in the right direction for Dumont. Right? How did how did you let that uh, slip by, Jimmy? Just Jimmy just bailed you out huge. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Good job, good job, the Huskies. I think it was um, Michael Chin had a good game. I noticed. Uh, I happened to check out a touchdown pass. Michael Vici had a nice touchdown pass. Michael Vici's been out, so yeah, you're right. They could be 500. They got a tough game this week, though, guys. They play Lakeland at home, at home at least. But they could be competitive. They've been competitive a lot of games. Westwood, they were really close in the head late. So, um, you know, Ricky Bird's got them going. Yeah. Uh, how's how's Palo State Park doing? I think they were off, maybe, were they? Uh, well, they've been off for a long time. <laughs> they they took one on the they took one on the chin last weekend in a uh, forty-eight to twelve. Uh, lost to Manchester Regional, but you know, hey, that was better than the week before against the Waldwick when they lost seventy to thirty-three. But all kidding aside, here, this is where the NJIC and Tom Curry mentioned it earlier. This is where there's some, re- you know, redemption for these types of programs that are trying to build from the bottom up. Here, you know, Pal Park has a home game this week against Elmwood Park. Both teams zero and seven. Both teams desperately need a win to, you know, just to energize the program, get things going a little bit, and they have a chance to do that. And they will have the similar chance next week against whoever they play in the NJIC crossover games. So Pal Park, Elmwood Park, take the fighting Tiger Lions and lay the points. We will see you next week on the football show. Follow the leader.